welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air date is February 17th, 1951, and the title is Black Grass Fever. Let's get into it. Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one Black Grass Fever. Some folks don't realize it, but in the early days of the Great Flash, cattle ranchers had a great responsibility to the big cities and east. Keep the stock moving to the packing houses on time so they could handle it all right. Now, once in a while, if a rancher didn't have the cattle he promised to deliver, he'd try to buy or borrow it from some friend of his. But sometimes, on account of drought, or rustling, or freezing weather, that might be hard to do. I remember one time California and I were finding it that day. Had nothing but bad luck, and we'd been traveling a hard trail. A long, long way from the bar cutter. George, Bob, how much longer are we going to be keeping the cat's eyes up? Ha, 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 that these guys straight ahead of these twin jeeps we're riding through? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, as soon as we get there, we drop down into one of the sweetest little cattle ranches in all Montana. Well, we see plenty of ranches in this trip, Bobby. What we need is the right folks to do business with. Now, who... Old Matt Blaine, one of the finest guys in anyway. Matt told me when he started this spread that the things ever got tough could just come over and buy a few hundred heads. Well, I reckon things should stay up all right. Uh, <laughs> hadn't been for me, we probably could have bought all we needed clear back in Cheyenne. Oh, sure. Whatever got into you, California? And the first thing I knew, you had your six shooter out, and there you were, making that poor fella dance to that lady piano player's music. Well, how wish I to know it was the sheriff. <laughs> What did you think that star was? His gallus buckle? Well, no, but how can you... Oh, there? forget it. All the world loves a lover. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that there. Ah, look at her. There she is, California, right below us. What a lady. Never did she anything to prove. Be kind of nice to own a spread like that someday. Mm-hmm. You'd be so lonesome for the boys at the bar 20, you'd be back in a month. Look, what do you make of that? Oh, don't see nothing except a nice ranch house and some of the greenest grass in the world. Over there to the right. What about those spears? Huh? Well, I'll be dead ready. Uh, they, uh, they ain't moving. None at all. Must be about a hundred of them. All laying down like they was asleep. They aren't sleeping in the hot sun. They're dead. Come on. We got here just in time because it looks like old Matt Blaine's in trouble. Back to Hopalong Cassidy and Black Grass Fever. Hoppy and California have come a long, hard trail to old Matt Blaine's place to borrow some badly needed cattle for the Bar 20. But when they get to Matt Blaine's, they find tragedy has struck at the beautiful spread, and more likely, they'll be trying to help Matt than asking a favor of him. That is, help Matt. If they can. Hey, Hoppy! Hello, Matt. Oh, it's mighty good to see you. This is California. Well, how are you, California? Hoppy told me lots about you. You're a friend of Hoppy's? Yeah, that's all I need to know. Uh, Hoppy, you don't know how glad I am to see you. Things are bad here. Oh, excuse me. This here's Mr. Lathrop. He's a veterinarian. Now, this is Hopalong Cassidy and his pal, California Carlson. How are you? Glad to know you, Mr. Cassidy. How do you, Lathrop? What's trouble, Matt? Hoppy, uh, two weeks ago, every rancher in this section started losing steers, and they've been dying like flies. Oh, we saw about a hundred ahead that away from the top of the butte. Go on, Matt. Well, I've lost half my herd, and some of the men have been hit harder than me. Isn't that? What's the reason for all this? Well, we didn't know. But Mr. Lathrop here happened to be riding through on the stagecoach when he heard about the trouble. He's a veterinarian from uh, Jackson City. Go ahead, Lathrop. Tell Hoppy about it. Well, the cattle on these spreads is dying of black grass fever. Black grass fever? What's that? Well, I've only heard about three other cases in this country myself. Mostly it happens in the Orient, you see. Well, how does it work? What does it do? Once it takes hold of grazing land, there's nothing you can do to stamp it out. As long as you graze steers here, more of them will die. Come to see your friend at a bad time, Mr. Cassidy. So I have, Lathrop. So I have. Well, as long as I'm here, I think I'll warn some of the other ranchers of my diagnosis. I think it's my duty. 
Oh, well, that's mighty nice of you, Lathrop, and thanks for telling me, too. Just for duty. Goodbye, man. You aim to stay in town, Mr. Uh, Lathrop? Yes, I probably will for a few days. Why? I'll probably see you then, professionally, I mean. Anytime, Captain. Oh, it ain't no yeah. use, Poppy. Come on, see him, I mean. Matt, what would you say if I told you I came here to take you up on your offer to let me buy a couple of hundred head any time I needed them to meet a delivery contract? Well, my cats are all dying here. You want to take and drive them off, or you might be able to save them. Plum welcome. Uh, yes, we'd be plum grateful, too. Uh, happy? Uh, not so fast, California. Matt, I need those cattle, and I need them bad. I need them fast. But not so fast that I'm going to leave you here thinking you're wiped out and you have to give up this beautiful spread. But what do you talk Facts is facts. Matt, have you got a book on cattle diseases in the house? Mm, I reckon I have. Yeah. I'd like to see it. And then, Matt, I'm going to give you a few facts to think about. Facts, I think, prove there's a fighting chance for you to save your spread. Well, you see, Matt, I've never heard of black grass fever, and there's nothing in this book about it either. Hmm, but the spears are dying. How come Lathrop just happens into town about this? Man? Oh, that don't make no difference. If I stay longer, it means losing more spears. I, uh, I can't afford it, Hoppy. But you're too old to make a fresh start, Matt. Now, what if your spears are being poisoned? Well, I don't think they are. We've had the druggist analyze the water in all the water holes, and it's all right. Besides, why would anybody want to ruin I don't know. Might just be someone is anxious to get a hold of this land around here. Mm, that's where you're wrong. When us ranchers pull out, the land goes back to the banker who's holding the mortgages. And who's that? Jess Atkins. Jess is the squarest banker in these parts. He says he can't be prosperous if us ranchers ain't. Hmm, he says that. Well, then... So what got your suspicions up in the first place, Hop? That's uh, just when I was coming to California. Here it is. Matt, think of that vet later. What are you driving at, Bobby? All the vets I've seen in, uh, were tanned from being out in the open with the stock. Uh, mm. Hoppy's right, man. And did you notice his hands, Matt? If that doesn't keep his nails long, they'd get in his way. Uh, maybe so, Hoppy. Think, Matt. Who does keep his nails long here in the West? I'll tell you who. A gambler. Mm. Now, Matt, does that give you anything to think about besides uh, just pulling up stakes? Maybe, Hoppy, maybe. Give me in California 48 hours. Maybe I'm all wrong. But before you decide to quit, just give us a chance to look into things for you. What if it don't do any good? Well, the offer still goes. If we fail, we'll buy your stock outright for the bar corner. If we succeed, we'll just borrow them. You keep your spread until we return the loan after the fall roundup. Hey, Hoppy, there's that vet buckboard parking in front of the bank. Surprise? Yeah, and the light's on inside the bank. Kind of late for banking. Not too late for that later fellow. Just walking down the bank steps. Look there. Uh, looks like that's money he's stuffing in his billfold. Well, what do you know? California, you scatter nose around some. Right, Hoppy. Well, when I come out of the bank, you'll be waiting for me in front of the Silver Dollar Casino down the street. Are you Jeff Atkins, the banker? Who wants to know? My name's Hopalong Cassidy. I'm a stranger oh, here, but... Oh, I'd know you. Bank's closed for business, though, Cassidy. That is? Yeah. About time it was, anyway. I did accommodate another stranger a minute ago, but I've locked up the vault now. Well, all I want to know right now is if you have any land to sell. I might want to buy some. No, I haven't a thing. And I don't think you'll find much anywhere else in these parts, either. How come? All these ranchers pulling out and you holding the mortgages, and I think you'd have a lot of land to sell. Oh, I see you've heard about the black grass fever, Cassidy. <laughs> That's right. And I see you've met Mr. Lathrop, the veterinarian. Yes, yeah, so I have. Well, if everyone pulls out, I'll have some land. Lots of land. But I'd hate to see you buy it and try to sell it to some unsuspecting poor devil. Why not? You'd have nothing to worry about. Well, just my conscience. Well, thanks for the information anyway. That's all I wanted to know. All right. Good night. Good night, Atkins. Hoppy, 
Take our pal Lace up, California. In the card game in the silver dollar here, and keep your face dealing most of the time. Deal. And that fellow Lace up knows how to deal, doesn't he? He sure does. But Lace up ain't winning. Let's take a look, see. There's the game over there. Let's stop and watch from the bar here. What's yours, strangers? Nothing, thanks. You see that? Uh, I sure did. Lisa deliberately slipped the young fellow a card. Now we'll see. There's the showdown. Uh, the Kenya folks win. Uh huh. California. Who's your luck in it? Who am I? Oh, no, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, no. I don't want to get into that game, Coffee. Uh, give me a chance to try to get a rise out of him. Well, let's go. Mm-hmm. All right, Coffee. If you say so. Hmm. I was pretending to be. Uh, howdy, fellas. Uh, get room for the concerned son luckiest poker player in Montana? Huh? How about it, Mr. Lathrop? Well, I'm losing, but it's all right with me. There's your winner. Ask him. His deal, anyway. Oh, sure, it's okay. Sit down, mister. Right next to me if you want him. I might bring you luck. <laughs> well, thanks, young fellas. Everybody ready? There goes. I didn't expect to win, really. No? King Bet. I was just killing some time until tomorrow. Uh, everybody staying? Well, you came here in business, and I figured I might be here. That does it. I just saw you second dealing, stranger. Hey, 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 got what's coming to him, all right? Look at that sack of chips to Sharper. He yeah, dressed yourself like a tender for right, didn't he? Yeah, he Not so fast. I was standing right back of the tenderfoot when he was dealing. He didn't second deal. Furthermore, Lathrop, on the hand just before this one, I saw you deliberately peel a card from the bottom of the deck and give it to the tenderfoot, and he won that pot. It was cold-blooded murder, man. Lathrop has done most of the dealing, and he wanted to make it look like the tenderfoot was winning a fortune, so he'd have a good reason to accuse him of cheating. You murdered him, Lathrop. Why? Were you trying to shut him up about something? Why, you... You got him, Hoppy. Winged him, me. I'll settle with you for this, Cassidy. We'll see. I could have killed you when you drew on me, Lathrop. There are a few things I want to find out about you first. Come on, California. We've got a few more calls to make tonight. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Black Grass Fever. Lathrop, the veterinarian who had advised Hoppy's friend Matt Blaine to give up his spread, has murdered a man in cold blood before Hoppy had a chance to save him. But now, Hoppy knows his suspicions about Lathrop are confirmed, and somehow, somebody must stand again if Matt Blaine and the other ranchers are so discouraged at losing their herds that they give up their spread. Hoppy is determined to find out how and who and why. Our horse is right down here. Huh? Must have just now started raining. Come on, Hoppy. Uh-oh. Uh, What's bothering you, California? Well, Hoppy, in all the excitement, I've seen the tenderfoot's wallet slip out of his pocket. Uh-huh. And maybe I ought to take it back, uh, knowing uh, now that he wasn't cheating. Why, you old sidewinder. You're not fooling me. You picked up that wallet because you knew there'd be valuable information in it. Glad I've done it. Let me see it. Ah, good. Here's his papers. Well, I thought it was something like that. According to this, the tenderfoot works for the Plainsland Railroad. I'm beginning to see the light, California. Yeah, where are we heading for now? Back to Matt's place. What's doing there, Hoppy? I want to find out a little more about Jeff Atkins. Maybe Matt can tell me. Uh-oh. What's that lying off of the north there? Why, it looks like a big, fresh block of salt through the salt lake. Right. I hear the footprints going from the buckboard of the salt lake. They're deep, see? Like someone was carrying that salt block from the buckboard. Yeah, and here's the same print going back to the buckboard. Only not so. Well, what do you say? Well, the same man went back to the buckboard after he put that salt block down. But the only man with the buckboard we've seen is that later. And he's back in town, probably getting a bullet picked out of his arm. Never mind about that. 
If this salt block is poison, I'll have a pretty good idea who drove the buckboard. And I'm heading back to town right now to have the salt analyzed. Grab it, California, and let's go. I'm coming into the drugstore with you, Hoffman, and maybe you ain't so popular around here. You better wait here with the horse. Yes. Well, Lathrop, I might have guessed this is where you'd be. Now, uh, now, no shooting in here, man. I'm, I'm just trying to bind up this arm, stranger. This ain't no place. Take it easy, mister. Go ahead and fix up your patients. I just want to have this salt analyzed. Any objections, Lathrop? You must have come here right after the shooting. Well, what about this? I just want to be sure. How long has he been here, druggist? Oh, about five, ten minutes, I guess. Then you loaned your buckboard to somebody tonight, Lathrop, before you went to play poker. But you didn't have time to do it since the shooting. What are you driving? You borrowed that buckboard just before you went in to play poker and just before it started raining. I don't know what you're driving at, Cassidy. Just this. If you known to be playing poker, you could provide an alibi for any trouble that buckboard might happen to get itself into. If that's what I was up to, why would I murder the tenderfoot? Like you claim. Lace up you and your partner, whoever he is, could have been providing alibis for each other. You don't know what you're talking about, Cassidy. But you're looking for trouble, and you're sure going to get it. I'm getting out of here. Hey, you better let me change those bandages tomorrow. I'm afraid he wasn't listening, my friend. Now, how long will it take you to analyze this salt plot? Or are you a friend of Lathrop? It'll well, take me but ten minutes. Just so as I get my fee, I'm in business to help anybody. Fair enough. But don't let this salt plot get away from you. All right, that's it. Hey, Hoppy. Your friend Lathrop just high-tailed it right down the street in a hurry. Looks like you sure scared him when you walked in with that salt block down this way. Well, I hope I scared him into running right over to the man who was driving that buckboard tonight. Let's just take a look at the bank and see. Lato figured he'd be seen at the gambling hall, and he'd have an alibi while someone else took the buckboard out to bank the shore. Huh? Probably. Right. What's that? Sounds like somebody running back toward the druggist. Well, anyway, here's the bank. And if Atkins and Lathrop are in there, they're sitting in the dark. That came from the drugstore. Let's go. I should have known it. Uh, no buck up. Lathrop would double back to the drugstore as soon as we left. It's the drugstore, right? Doc, you hurt bad? Uh, I'm done, Mr. Cassidy. Somebody, somebody must have got in that window. He tried up to me and... Before I could... The back window's still open, I'll be, so I'll light out after him. Yeah, in Pronto, California. Oh, oh well, look, so I see the callers coming out. Uh, I'll stand by. You stop, I'll handle them. Hey, what's going on here? Somebody plugged the druggist here, Sheriff. Uh, how'd you get here so fast, stranger? I was standing outside the bank when I heard a shot. I ran right over. Uh, outside the bank at this hour? Maybe he was, and maybe he wasn't. Well, mm-hmm. later... I but... heard Cassidy having an argument with old Doc just ten minutes ago. He knows I did. Don't you, Cassidy. Oh, you were here earlier tonight, Cassidy, huh? Sure I was. But I just brought a block of salt to have it analyzed. Mm. Ask him to tell you where the salt is, then, Sheriff. Well, Cassidy? Well, I, well it was right over here. Uh, but it just ain't there now, huh? Get your hands up, Cassidy. I'm taking you in for the murder of Doc Brown. Sorry, Sheriff, but I just got to ask you to drop that shoot knife. Oh, well, well. Go on. Oh, drop it. Why, California, you old sidewinder. You are downright eloquent. Well, me and Hoppy's got a few errands to do tonight, sir. So we'll just be taking our leave. The horse is outside the back window, Hoppy. Ask me where we're going, California. Now, gentlemen, I'll trouble you to keep peaceable and quiet while we go through this window. Huh? Where are we headed for, Hoppy? Why, we'll just head straight from that plane's place, of course. He'll vouch for us. Now, don't move any of you. Go ahead, California. <laughs> Uh, now, let's get riding. Hey! Hey! Rogo! Get after those birds! Those fellas shoot mighty poor. See that side street up the end of the, end of the town? Nicest the little side street I ever did see. Right behind the strong trail to Matt Blaine. Right. I'm getting the shadows over there. They figure over that next rise. They heard us all right. They're headed for Matt's place. They sure are, Hoppy. And where, might I ask now, what are we really headed for? That tenderfoot who works for the railroad. 
Told you he came here on business. Well, that's right, Hoppy, but what could that business be? Well, tying in with a play Lathrop made can only mean one thing. The railroad sent the young fella here to buy up the right-of-way for a line that's going to be built right through this town. And Lathrop didn't want the word to get out before he scared the ranchers off the track. But Lathrop isn't in this alone. He is a stranger here. He must be getting some help from inside the town. Turn to be And I want to be able to prove who that is. Oh, I'll be clear. What are we going to do now, Hoppy? Do? Remember Jeff Atkins? We're heading for his bank. The bank's dark, Hoppy. Atkins ain't here. Fine. We're going in anyway. Uh. Well, I see the poor old druggist wasn't the only one who leaves these windows unlocked around these parts. Come in, California. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the idea, Hoppy? There's only one safe place so close to the drugstore, Lathrop could have taken that salt after he plugged the drugger. I uh, got you, Hoppy. But if we're wrong, we blast that board and uh, the salt ain't inside. Then we are really be hogtied. They'll be wanting us for murder and bank robbery. Hoppy, you sure wouldn't want to put a lot of money in that ball. Don't look very strong. Stand back, I think I can keep that handle off. That last one did it. Hoppy, there's your poison salt rock. Sure, and that means that Atkins and Lathrop were in this together. Don't move either of you. Well, Atkins, nice of you to join the party. I had an idea you'd be heading back here once you figured out the salt was poison, Cassidy. So I've just been waiting for you to blow the vault door off. We didn't have to blow it off. We just fired three shots at it and it fell off. Now, when the posse comes back to town, they're going to find three bullet holes in my vault door. Three bullets missing from your gun and two dead bank robbers. Uh, uh, I'm going to kill you both. <laughs> Now to the conclusion of our story, Black Grass Fever. What a perfect setup, Cassidy. To be able to kill you because you're robbing my vault. But it's not quite so easy. Think it over. You've got one gun. There are two of us. You think you can kill us before we close in? Maybe I'd better start with one of you right now. Don't be a fool, Atkins. You may get one, but the other will get you. Listen. The posse coming back. Uh, don't bluff. I don't hear anything. You don't either. Oh, yes, I do. Hoppy must have known they were on the false trail when they got out in the open. And you haven't taken that salt out of the vault yet. Uh, I don't hear anything. Move a little closer to the window, Atkins. I can hear them. They're crazy, Cassidy. I can't hear a thing. I'm <laughs> going to... You didn't get hit, did you, California? Nope. You all right, Hoppy? Oh, sure. And banker Atkins wasn't hit either by anything harder than the heel of my suit and iron. Oh, by the time it comes through, the sheriff will really be back. And all we have to do to get a confession out of Mr. Atkins is just leave that poison salt block sitting right in his safe where it's nice and dry. <laughs> Huh? Yeah? Just tell me one thing. Yeah? What was you uh, thinking uh, when you were deciding whether or not to take a chance of blowing off the door to act in the safe and taking a chance of maybe being wanted for bank robbery? Well, California, I'll tell you. Yeah? Yeah, Huff? I figured if it came to the worst, yeah. then we'd just grab ourselves some of Jeff Atkins' money. So then we could even pay double if we had to to get cattle for the bar 20. <laughs> Well, well, I declare. Or if we got the cattle without paying double, we'd buy some more cattle and start a spread for you to run, oh, California. Why, hop along, Cassidy. You're the most thoughtful hombre this side of the... Then we'd go back to Cheyenne and look up that lady piano player you were so local about and get her to settle down with you. Oh, now, Hoppy, uh, you wouldn't... Uh, no, sirree, I ain't a go... Uh, yeah. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> You didn't but for a minute fool me, hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> no, sir, not but for a minute, you ring-tailed coyote. <laughs> I guess not, California. I guess not. <laughs> hop along, Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.